You ever buy a Lightroom preset and it made your photos look like this? Yeah, me too. So let's talk about why presets won't necessarily make your photos any better. What's good, what's up, Dom here. I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe. If you're new here, I'm a photographer videographer in Montreal, Canada, and this channel is all about that. So if you're into cameras and cameras, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified whenever I post new videos. Do it. This video is probably going to sound a bit like a big long rant, but hear me out, I will be providing some solutions to said ranting. Let's go. So if you're a photographer and watch any amount of YouTube or scroll through any Instagram at all, which if you're watching this video, I assume that's you, then you've probably had most of your, if not all of your favorite social media-ers whatever you want to call them, try to sell you their Lightroom presets on one of their platforms, if not on all of them. Lightroom presets, if you don't know what they are, are basically the equivalent of filters on Instagram, but for Lightroom, a professional photo editing software. That's a pretty vulgar way of putting it since you can pretty much change everything after applying the preset and adjust everything to your liking, but it's technically a one-click way of getting a look that somebody else created onto your own photos. It's been a wildly popular way for photographers to monetize their style, kind of like asking people for money in exchange for your secret sauce. And I get it. A lot of people on these platforms are praised for their style. Sick tones, bro. And people would be willing to pay good amounts of money for a quick and dirty way to get those same results. People are into it, photographers make money. It's win-win, right? Well, not entirely, it's not lose win, but I'll get to that. Now don't get me wrong, I've bought my fair share of presets in the past and still use some of them to this day for some of the content that I produce. But as I get comfortable with my own style and get more and more used to Lightroom in general, I have been using them less and less. And if I do use a preset, it's usually just a base to go off of, but that's not really what I wanted to talk in this video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about why presets aren't as one click as they're usually made out to be for a multitude of reasons. And I really wish some creators were more upfront about that. So let's look at some of the reasons why the presets that you buy might not work with your photos. Number one, the most obvious would be the lighting in the scene is different. If you're shooting a sunset, for example, and the preset you're trying to use is made for a foggy morning, well, it's obviously not gonna change your sunset into a foggy morning. There's a pretty extreme example, but you get what I'm trying to say. The same thing goes for certain presets that are specifically designed to alter certain colors. So if you're trying to use a teal and orange preset on a photo that has no red, orange, yellow, or blue, it's not really gonna do the desired effect. That makes sense, right? Second reason why the presets might not work with your photos, your general settings are off. White balance, exposure, etc. These presets are usually made to work best with photos that are properly taken in camera. And while some of these settings are usually things that you can go ahead and tweak in Lightroom afterwards, sometimes it's just not possible. And for that reason, the presets won't work. You still gotta know your shit. And the third reason why presets might not work on your photos, and this is often wildly overlooked, I cannot state this enough, but you're just not using the same camera. Simple as that. See, you could be shooting at the exact same location with the exact same lighting conditions, as well as using the same basic camera settings. But if you're using a different camera, your image and your colors, which is what most of a look comes down to, are most likely gonna look different. Some cameras are super contrasty, some are less, some have more or less saturation, some are sharper than others. And that all plays into how the applied preset is going to work. Most cameras within a same brand usually tend to have the same kind of colors and same kind of contrast and all of that. But when you start jumping from system to system, that's really when you can start to see some differences. And I haven't even talked about the fact that lenses and picture profiles, even within using a same camera, can affect your image as well. Meaning that even with the exact same camera, simply using a different picture profile and possibly using any other lens that's not the $3,000 15 to 35 RF lens that you can't afford that all your favorite YouTubers are using can really make a big difference. So what, Don? 
You're telling me that if I don't use the exact same gear with the exact same settings, and if I'm not some sort of photography wizard, that presets just aren't going to work for me? Well, no, it's definitely more nuanced than that, but getting presets that were made with your specific camera, or at least camera brand in mind, will definitely help. It's usually never mentioned though, so you're probably gonna have to do some serious stocking on your favorite content creators, but that's another story. Now let's talk about workflow and normalization for a second. Uh, I'll be getting to the workarounds and tips and tricks and all that in just a second. Don't worry, just hear me out. Now I haven't really toyed around with many programs outside of the Adobe Suite, but the more color grading I do for video, the more I find it absurd that there isn't a more universally streamlined way for people to change the colors and the looks of their images within Lightroom. See, when it comes to video, it's usually a two-step process. So first, you usually go for a primary adjustment that basically just brings your footage to a neutral point, some sort of universally accepted neutral point on how your footage should look like with the correct white balance, how much contrast and saturation there should be in your footage, just like a very solid starting point. After you've gotten your footage to a neutral point, you then make a second adjustment. It's usually on a completely separate layer, it's a completely separate thing, and that's where you're going to most likely apply a LUT. A LUT is basically the equivalent for a Lightroom preset, but for video. This is what you're gonna be using to actually color grade your footage to really get the colors to change and make the look that you're going for. That first process that I talked about though is incredibly important in video. It basically allows you to make your camera look just like any other camera, regardless of brand. Brands put out specific presets for free for their own cameras to get them to that neutral look. So that way, regardless of the LUT that you apply, it should more or less give the same result regardless of the camera you're using. And then also you can easily adjust the intensity of the LUT or the look that you're going for. There's literally a slider that basically turns it up or down, and you can also adjust the opacity of the layer itself. It's super easy, it's super versatile. So what's this got to do with photography, man? All right, well, let's get back to photography for a second. So what happens when you apply a preset and it doesn't work? It's too intense or not intense enough. There isn't really an effective way in Lightroom to do like a primary adjustment like you would do in video software. So that's out of the question. So the next obvious step would be turning up or down the intensity of the preset. Bring it back a bit or turn it up. Well, you can't do that either. I don't know why this isn't something straightforward that you can do in Lightroom in 2020, but somehow it just isn't. Now, I wouldn't be making this video if it was all rants and no knowledge, so here are a couple of ways around this. There's a free plugin for Lightroom called The Fader. I'll link it down below. It lets you adjust the intensity of a Lightroom preset. That thing that Lightroom can't do, this thing does it. It's super straightforward, it's a pop-up menu and it lets you adjust one preset at a time. You can go from 0% to 150%, so this is good for reducing the intensity of a preset but also boosting it past its limits. This is what I've been using for the past little while and what I find works best. If not, you can also transform your Lightroom presets into profiles, which is just another form of preset within Lightroom using Camera Raw in Photoshop. This way is cool because when you're looking at profiles in Lightroom, it actually shows you a preview of what it would look like on the image in a side panel itself without you having to click on it, without you having to even hover over the preset. Once you've applied a profile, there's then a slider where you can actually adjust the intensity of the profile itself. This trick is also used to transform LUTs that you've bought or created for your own video work and apply those same looks onto your photos. The only downside here is that in order to create a profile, you've got to use Photoshop in Camera Raw and you've got to actually create these profiles individually. You've got to do it for every single preset, one after the other. So if you've got a lot of presets, this can be pretty time consuming, but once it's done, it works great. I'm not sure why photographers aren't releasing their presets as profiles for Lightroom instead, but that's just me. 
But anyways, I'll link in the description below a couple of videos that show you a bit more in depth on how to go about these two techniques that I just talked about. It's all super easy stuff, trust me, but I didn't wanna make this video a 40 minute video and other people have been explaining it way better than I can. Now, if for some reason you're a content creator watching this or were planning on releasing Lightroom presets for yourself, here's what I implore you to do and be upfront about when releasing your presets sets. Include the presets as profiles as well. It takes two seconds to do, and even if this isn't the way that you personally use your own presets, just let the user choose. And then more importantly, let the people know what brand of camera or what specific camera and picture profiles you were using to create the images that were used to make the presets. I know some photographers use different camera bodies and will be using a whole sleuth of different lenses, but most people are usually sticking at least to a single brand and not really changing from system to system throughout different shoots. People are usually probably trying to shoot in the same kind of way, using the same kind of picture profiles, regardless of what camera you're using, because that just makes your workflow in post-production so much easier for yourself. So. Just let the people know. I know it's counterintuitive, like telling a portion of your audience that we're willing to buy your presets that your presets actually might not work for them. But if I knew of a creator that was putting out presets specifically for the EOS R, I would most likely be buying every single one because I wouldn't have to second guess it. I would just know that these presets were 100% going to work for my photos. Again, just let the people know. Now, if you're someone that's just on the fence about getting somebody else's presets, my words to you, just be wary. Try to see if at minimum you can find out what camera brand they're typically shooting on. And at the very least, expect the fact that while some presets will work, some others might not. Use these presets as a means to figure out how these people are actually achieving these looks. Always, always, tweak your photos a bit further after applying a preset because there is literally no time that it couldn't be just a bit better. Have fun with it, fuck around with the sliders. Just try different things. And I know it's not what people wanna hear, but the less presets you use, the faster you're going to start to really understand how Lightroom and the color space and how everything works, and even begin to understand how to achieve certain looks by yourself if that's what you wanna do. Oh, and then bonus tip. If you're a beginner photographer, don't touch that clarity slider within Lightroom. Just don't do it. Thank me later. Anyways, I just wanted to get my thoughts about the subject out into the world because I truly think this is something that we don't talk about enough. And I think a lot of newer photographers easily get sucked into buying these presets thinking it'll make them this litty photog with the click of a button and that's just not right. Anyways, I hope you got something out of this video. Give them the thumbs if you did. I usually post a new video every single week, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. And with that being said, I'm out. Peace, bye.